and going. Hi, everybody. Welcome to session five of Thursday of the Global Hope Conference. Now we have Edit B. Kiss and her presentation on how to heal and prevent emotional traumas. And this is a really, really topical session because so many people suffered going through the COVID crisis and the other crises that are happening around the world. And dealing with these emotions and dealing with trauma is so vital to making sure that you stay healthy during this time. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Edith and she's gonna um, teach you how to deal with these traumas. Thank you, Christopher, for the introduction. Thank you so much. Hi, everyone. So the topic is how to heal and prevent emotional trauma. I am Edith Bikis. I'm a karma healing practitioner, Reiki master, Shechem healer, and life coach. And uh, Karma Guru Shumant Kaul established the Karma Guru Academy, and he's my teacher, and he won an award, a Good Karma Award 2016, and also was voted best top five healers in the world by Transfer Press. So my outline for this presentation is, first, I would like to explain the connection between chakras and endocrine glands. And second, how can you activate the pineal gland and what is happening when you activate it and why is it important actually? And the third is why is it important to heal and prevent emotional traumas and how to do it? So these are the pictures about our body. And uh, you know, everything is energy. So, but the thing is why you see, for example, the gland and your physical body is because they are more dense. So there is a much more density. So you can actually see your glands, your body, your physical body, but the energy body, you can't see it because they are less dense. But everything is energy. So here you can see uh, the whole relate the glands to the chakras. So the chakras are the energy centers in our body. And there are seven of them from root chakra to the crown chakra, root chakra, sacral chakra, solar plexus, heart chakra, throat chakra, third eye chakra, and crown chakra. And they are totally aligned with our main glands. The glands are responsible for uh, product, producing uh, chemicals in our body. And also, so the chemicals are the hormones. So the hormone production is very important because they actually, the hormones are actually um, um, creating our, um, physical appearance, our emotions, our, so it's controlling our body actually. So if, if our chakras are out of balance and the energy body is not healthy, this uh, affecting the glands production, the glands hormone production, and it has, it's gonna uh, bring physical illnesses with it, which also can be like mental illness and also in physical illness. So if we go next slide, I'm also explaining here that the, what I just said, that the physical illness is related to the negative effects of uh, underbalanced chakras. So how can you activate pineal gland? So pineal gland is actually the um, gland which is associated with your third eye. So when you are doing samadhi meditation, it's a meditation when you activate your chakras and you're balancing your chakras, and you activate your third eye, that's when the pineal gland is activated. You can support this samadhi meditation with pranayama breathing technique, mindful living and positive vibrations through positive thinking and gratitude, bliss, joy, affirmation. So what is happening during uh, samadhi meditation is that uh, your um, brain waves are going to be in that phase which is one of which is the deepest brain waves and is like a sleep it's like when you are sleeping it's, it's, it's uh, exactly the same way but you are not sleeping you are meditating and uh, during this meditation you start to produce hormones here they, here they go so what is happening in the delta brain waves the following hormones will be released pineal gland start to produce serotonin and melatonin which is managing your mood swings and sleep patterns and it also activates your hippocampus, what starts to grow new neurons. So if you think about it, uh, through this meditation technique, you can actually activate these kind of hormones to get produced without 
going into deep sleep in just a couple of, in like 15, 20 minutes during meditation. And if you practice it uh, enough long, these uh, hormones are stabilized and then uh, produced time to time and they actually bring into a healthy body. So for example, also uh, activate the hypothalamus, what controls the pituitary gland, which releases the human growth hormones and the oxytocin. Why is it important? Human growth hormones actually uh, very important for your physical appearance, your body weight uh, and your metabolism. The oxytocin is your bonds, your bonds between people, like in the family, uh, relationship in the family, between children and parents and between couples. So it's actually all kinds of uh, negative situations that's going on now due to COVID-19 uh, that you have to stay at home with your family and then you're having like uh, arguments and uh, some kind of uh, many people is going through abuse so if you're actually doing this meditation technique you produce more oxytocin and you will be much more uh, bonded to your family and uh, not gonna and you won't create uh, negative emotions around it so adrenal gland is, will produce more DHEA which is actually responsible also for your mood for less depression less stress and it's also the immune system. So it's gonna uh, strengthen your immune system. Here is our brain. You can see where is the pineal gland is a very, very small gland and how is it actually connected with the other parts of the brain and how they actually work together. And when the pineal gland stimulated, it's actually affecting all your brain. Um, so I still want to talk about uh, emotions. Emotions is energy in motion. And uh, if we think about our chakras, uh, they are actually can be blocked by negative emotions. And uh, if, you were, if you were like in the childhood, you were left alone, you felt very lonely, your parents uh, ignored you, then your heart chakra gets blocked. And the, uh, due to that, uh, you can have later also uh, feelings of being left alone and uh, you can't open your heart chakra, you can't get a, a, a normal relationship with anyone because you won't allow yourself to be loved. Uh, also, if you have uh, issues in relationships, uh, your sacral chakra can be blocked if you are in physical abuse or verbal abuse and it's also going to cause you um, a negative, like you won't be able to commit to relationships, it's going to bring you also negative energy in that way. And uh, for your root chakra, for example, the root chakra is responsible for your financial stability, also for your roots, your connection to your parents, the connection to your home country. So if you have issues with that, that means your root chakra is blocked. And this is also uh, coming back to the emotions, like you feel unsupported, you feel left alone, and you feel like you, you can't find uh, the way to actually support yourself and your family. So the thing is that when you have this kind of uh, life, this kind of life patterns, and you have this kind of emotions, it's gonna be like a cycle. So you have the negative emotion, you feel lonely, but because of that, your heart is closing more and it's gonna uh, underproduce your glands. And then due to this, you again thinking negatively and you having again having these kind of emotions, you again having again having blocked those chakras and the hormone production is gonna be blocked again. But I, it's also, I mean, it's uh, related to all of the chakras. So the thing is that you get into a cycle and to get out of that cycle is very, very difficult because if you just keep your life as it is, you don't change anything and you don't start to break this pattern, it's going to be continuous because one emotion is creating the next emotion and it's creating the hormone production, which is creating the negative emotions again and again. And as you see, the cells and DNA store the thoughts, the memories, and in present life and in ancestors and collective consciousness of the environment. And thoughts become organized to pattern and got hardwired in our subconscious and unconscious mind. So uh, if there is a child who, for example, under trauma, the trauma can be for a child even if you shout at the child or if you abuse it physically or, mentally or verbally or... Um, had a bad experience of seeing something in the TV, for example, a bad news. So to, to have a child, a trauma is very easy if we don't uh, be careful with it. 
and uh, a Harvard University hospital had an examination on it, the brain, and they actually checked the children, I mean the people who had childhood traumas and the people who had no childhood traumas. And they could recognize that the people who had the childhood traumas, their brain, the nine part of the brain, was actually less active and they had uh, less cells. So uh, it has a huge impact on your future, on your availability, on your uh, how you actually can learn later and how you actually are able to live your life when you grow up if you had child childhood trauma. So the mother is really important in this situation because the mother is the most responsible for what is happening with the child. So they need to think about how to behave, uh, what to, how to actually present the what is happening outside of the world not to traumatize the children why i'm saying this so let's go forward where i uh, where is actually our traumas are stored so what is stored in this so as you see in the picture we have conscious mind subconscious mind and unconscious mind so the conscious mind is what actually we are aware of uh, the everyday situations what we accept what we can see what we can touch we analyze those actions and uh, that's like 10 percent the subconscious mind and unconscious mind is like the other 90 percent the unconscious mind is like a couple of percent from the subconscious mind when you actually living your life in the subconscious through your subconscious mind it means you are automated and your your cultural beliefs your personal beliefs and your self-image and then uh, all of these fears and belief systems are actually stuck there and uh, that's why you have the cycle which i was explaining the emotional cycles so you can actually um, release those kind of beliefs or personal beliefs you can actually change them by mindfully doing positive affirmation and practicing gratitude and forgiveness but day by day every day being conscious about how to actually release those uh, unco those beliefs from your unconscious, from your subconscious uh, mind. What is in the unconscious? They are more deeper traumas, violence, abuse, and and shame and guilt. These are actually related to your sacral chakra and to your heart chakra. These are so deep and so uh, cruel that uh, you need for the re to release it. You need the karma healing. I will tell more about that. So. Um, Karma healing is a process when through the Samadhi meditation, the brain goes to delta brain waves, as I told before, and we activate the pineal gland. And then we are able to communicate with the unconscious mind to go back to those traumas to actually, we could see in our mind, visualize those traumas, which you haven't even remembered because they were so buried. Sometimes your unconscious mind is doesn't want to even show them to you because then you're going to be again in the trauma uh, you re relieve it so the thing is that through samadhi meditation uh, in delta brain waves we are able to go back to those traumas and then you are able to release them with the with the help of a karma healer or if you learn the technique uh, you can release it for yourself from your uh, unconscious mind and it's very important that you also get the acknowledging the highest learning of the trauma so you you have a closure of it um, so how to prevent emotional traumas um, first of all if you learn the technique of science of consciousness and karma yoga healing it's also helping you to learn the 12 virtues which for example are the kindness the patience tolerance and also teaching you uh, mindfulness uh, and uh, if you're practicing samadhi meditation, that's also very important because through samadhi meditation, as I said, you're going to produce more positive hormones in your body and you're going to have much better mood, uh, much better uh, optimism, and you're going to be more joyful. And through the samadhi meditation, when you actually activate pineal gland, you get into the vibration, you're going to vibrate together with the energy of the universe and you start to have a cell labor healing. So practicing Samadhi meditation is very, very important. Being mindful as well. Uh, mindful means uh, watching your actions, even watching your emotions, like how you react for, uh, for certain things, certain situations. Um, 
what I explain now here is actually combined of 60,000 years old karma yogi techniques and the newest scientific uh, results. So it is proven results and many people actually use them. And what is important, as I mentioned, that the woman here is very important in this story because the woman is responsible for the children, is responsible for the nation, for the people of the world is actually going to grow up and then we want them to grow up without emotional trauma, to be happy and to be powerful. So we're going to have a free three days basic course on karma yoga healing. It's going to be free for women. So it's, if you use the code Women Power 2020 and you go to the Facebook page Karma Yoga Budapest in, in the, from 19 to 21, it's going to be a three days basic course. You're going to learn mindfulness. You're going to learn how to do samadhi meditation. You're going to learn how to use the karma healing techniques to actually release uh, these traumas from your life and then from your families or friends because you will be able to help them. You will be able to actually uh, cure them. Um, so my web website, you can also connect with me through my website, uh, editbkiss.com and I have also an Instagram, editb.kiss. Um, you can ask me questions now because I run through pretty fast <laughs> because I'm very excited about this topic and I want you to know this information. So I'm ready to answer any questions which comes up about this topic. So pranayama breathing technique is actually clearing uh, your pineal gland before you go into samadhi meditation. So it's very uh, recommended to do pranayama breathing technique before you start the samadhi meditation. And uh, the positive vibrations through positive thinking and gratitude and bliss and joy, how it is works actually, your heart is vibrate on a very big, uh, scale and when you feel blissful and joyful and when you feel gratitude in your heart it vibrates so much that it actually resonates into your pineal gland so it has a positive effect on your pineal gland hormone production as well because of the heart has a very strong vibration I can still explain some other things about the chakra which could be very useful so I told about the root chakra uh, what is related, what kind of emotions is relating to the root chakra. I also thought about the sacral chakra, the, the commitment and relationship, relationship is, issues. Uh, now I would like to talk about more about the solar plexus. Solar plexus is uh, your willpower, is your self-esteem. So if you have a low, low self-esteem, if you feel unworthy, if you uh, feel like stuck, and then you don't have the motivation, then definitely you have blockages in your solar plexus. And uh, due to this, uh, to get out of this, it's again positive affirmation you need to practice to, to, be, to make yourself aware that you are unique, you are powerful, you're actually able to conquer whatever you, your goal is because, we, we, what, because our mind is very powerful. So your self-esteem needs to be elevated to actually achieve your goals. Heart chakra we talked about. Uh, the throat chakra is also important because the throat chakra is about uh, talking your truth verbally and also in writing. So people who are unable to talk uh, about their situation, about themselves, or even in front of many people, they feel shamed or, or guilt then probably their throat chakra is blocked or they are unable to write, uh, they are stuck, they cannot write the book what they want to write, then their throat chakra is blocked. And uh, to heal your throat chakra, you need to be honest with others. To also, uh, you need to allow yourself to speak your truth. For example, uh, there are people who have thyroid uh, problems, overbalance or underbalance thyroid uh, problems, that means they 
are in a situation when someone doesn't allow them to speak their truth. For example, in a company they work and then the management doesn't allow the person to uh, express themselves or they are in a relationship where they are under pressure and they can't actually uh, discuss what they feel with their partner. So that's uh, a thyroid gland issue. And also the throat chakra is related to all the respiratory illnesses. So if you have a flu or cold or always a, 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 lung, a lungs issues, asthma, that's also re related to your um, throat chakra. The third eye, why is it important, the third eye? is actually connected to the pineal gland. And the third eye is uh, seeing the future. It sounds a, a bit mystical, but the seeing the future means that you actually follow your goods. So you actually feel that you are on the right path. So you get intuitions, you get ideas, you get, uh, you have the feeling of uh, finding your voice, you have the feeling of, uh, you have the vision. So it, it, and then when you have your uh, third eye closed, then you fear of the future, you have the fear of the future and then you, uh, you are actually stuck there and then you, because of that fear, you can't go forward and then how to open your third eye again, practicing the Samadhi meditation, which also called transcendent meditation. And uh, that's gonna open up your third eye, which is not mystical, nothing bad about it. Opening up your third eye means you can see your vision, you're gonna have good ideas and you can step forward in your goals and then you won't have the fear of the future. The crone chakra is actually connected to your pineal gland as well. And uh, this is more related to how you see yourself in the universe, how you connect uh, yourself to the universal energy, what we all live in, what we all actually aspire all the time. And then actually, you know that we are all the earth and people and everyone was produced somehow, we somehow got here. So there is a universal energy, an energy center, so through that crown chakra, you can connect to that energy center. And the people who doesn't believe any kinds of higher power, they have a locked crown chakra, blocked crown chakra, because they have uh, they are rigid, maybe in their religious thinking, uh, or they are atheistic, or uh, then they experience blocked crown chakra. So the chakras are connected with each other through meridian lines. And then if one of them are blocked, the life energy can't flow through them. So if, can you imagine if someone doesn't believe a higher power, a higher energy actually is blocking its crown chakra and then it's completely blocking the whole body from life energy because it can't reach your other chakras. So first you need to open the crown chakra, then your third eye to have vision, not to fear from future, then your, corn, your throat chakra is important as well to, see your, to speak your truth and your heart chakra to accept love and support. Your solar plexus to be self, high self-esteem, to be able to reach your goals, to have willpower, to go forward. And your sacral chakra to have good relationship, loving relationship, to be able to actually have a nice family life, a supporting family life, which uh, very good because then you are not alone in your endeavors. And then the root chakra is also very crucial because you need financial support. You need uh, to acknowledge that you are coming from somewhere. You rooted to Mother Earth. You have your parents, your ancestors, and you also have your home country, which gave you all those. Uh, you have to be grateful for your home country and to your parents that you are actually here and you having this life. So root chakra is needs to be open to be able to receive financial support and to have a, a very positive, uh, successful life. Yes, I talked about the hormones. Um, pineal gland is releasing melatonin and serotonin and melatonin is very important. Uh, so to do the meditation actually in uh, dark, that's recommended because then the melatonin production is much better. So you need to be in a quiet space, uh, darkness, and that's how you do the Samadhi meditation. 
It's an eighth chakra meditation. I haven't talked about the eighth chakra, but there is an eighth chakra above the seventh chakra, which is actually the chakra of the aura, of our auras, and then it's actually holding all the karmic uh, memories and past memories and from our ancestors or the failures and the successes. So when we actually activate our pineal gland, we connect to the eighth chakra as well during the samadhi meditation technique, transcendence meditation technique. And uh, it's important part. So again, uh, this course is going to be actually a six days course, three days a basic course, and the other three days an advanced. And the basic course is going to be free for every woman who's joining and want to learn and recommend it to learn Samadhi meditation, transcendent meditation, and mindfulness and the karma healing to actually help for the family, for the children, and uh, to, to be able to prevent emotional traumas in the family and able to care about their family and their children. So you can actually register on the Facebook, Facebook page, Karma Yoga Buddha Fest. And uh, you can also find me on my website and on my Instagram. So I'm taking questions, I'm sure. There are some new info. There were some new informations here. Excellent job, edit. Thank you. Excellent. Nice work, edit. Um. Yep. So. Um, that was a good job. Um, I really enjoyed it. And um, are you on any of the panels tomorrow? Yeah, I'm on the six, on the last one. Last one. Okay, cool. I look forward to seeing that. Um, we'll get this. Um, I'm going to shut the recording off.